think that, that um, uh, we need to conduct policy in a way that supports that outcome. That's, that's what we're doing now. We're also, as part of our um, review, looking at uh, potential um, innovations, changes to uh, the way we think about things, changes to the framework that would lead, lead us, that would be more supportive of achieving inflation on a 2%. That's crazy. Basis over time. That's okay, so just quickly, I just want to touch on it. Remember, they're doing not QE. The balance sheet has increased drastically. Drastically. Or they're back up to four trillion. And they're in their holdings. They're back up to four trillion. It's just that's what he's talking about right here. They're thinking of different ways of doing it. Because QE will upset the market because it's telling them that QE three, two, and one failed, and you're doing it again. And this is when the economy is doing doing great. According to Trump, once again, greatest economy of, of all time. So what are they thinking about? So he goes into it a little bit more. That's at the very heart of what we're doing in the review. It's too early to be announcing decisions. We haven't made them yet. But we're in the middle of thinking about ways that we can make that symmetric 2% inflation effective more credible uh, by achieving symmetric 2% inflation. And it comes down to using our policy tools to achieve 2% inflation. That is the, that is the, uh, the, the thing that must happen for credibility of this area. So we're committed to doing that. Do you think that review might be uh, announced? So we're, we're in the middle. We're really in quite in the middle of it now. And my thinking is still that it will run into the middle of next year. These are, you know, these changes to monetary policy frameworks happen. They don't happen really quickly, let's say. Uh, inflation targeting for many years to evolve. I don't think we'll take many years here. I think we'll, we'll, um, we'll wrap it up around the middle of next year. I guess, I, sometime before. The question, please. Okay, <clears throat> so rates. Back then, it will, you know, Stanley, I'll go back. I'll go back to Stanley because it's the clearest option. You know, from all the '60s, from like when NASA and everything was being built, Kennedy, all these, you know, JBL, Nixon came into office. All these things, you know, they spent so much money, then inflation started running rapid. Top of that, oil was prices were gone up through the roof. Remember, oil causes inflation. Rates had to go up to 20% because of Paul Volcker. He had to bring them up to 20%. And he's making it seem like it's so difficult to get inflation. He's making it seem like it's impossible. Not impossible. I don't want to say the word impossible because they're going up. He acknowledges that they are going up a little. I'm going to show you this right now. But at this moment, at 19, uh, the time that I have on here, my notes is 1955. That's when the dollar started. Remember, at this moment, the dollar was uh, rallying. Gold was going down. But around it started slowly starting to go up. At this moment, it started to reverse, and it goes about it goes to interest rates. But it, it seems goofy to me because back then and I wasn't alive. Obviously, I was born ninety one. But from all the studying high school teachers and everybody, you know, professors in my college, they brought they bring up this moment in their lives because it was it sucked. You know, twenty percent interest rates, gas prices, and all this stuff. Jimmy Carter. But he makes it seem like. It's real difficult when inflation, even once it gets out, a lot of people say it's a genie. Once it gets out of the bottle, you know it's gone. So, Ray, so that's really about inflation, and um, you know we, we haven't yet. We, we just touched two uh, percent core inflation. We did one measure. Just touched it. That's one measure. I guess one, quickly, quick. Sorry. CPI core inflation is the way the government the government uh, measures inflation. But that's just one measure. It's the one that matters the most, but he goes on to talk about the others. For a few months, and then we can move on back. So I think, um, I think we would need to see a really significant move up in inflation that's persistent before we can consider any of this to address inflation. At that moment is when the, the dollar and gold re reversed. Because he just didn't say anything. He's, he used the word significant. Significantly, that word showed that you know they're not gonna raise rates. They're not thinking about raising rates. They're more. There was a scale. One was raising, <clears throat> one was hold, and one was cutting. That word significant will put them closer to cutting than it will to to higher estimate hiking rates. 
It means they're thinking more about cutting rates than they are about hiking them. Goes back to the first question when the girl asked them about, you know, are you going to, you know, bring back the rates like Alan Greenspan that he took them back. This is when it started, you know, reversing because people started to understand that they're not thinking about raising rates. So why will the dollar rally if they're not going to raise rates? Why will the dollar be in demand if they keep printing, Q, not QE, and they keep putting money into the repo markets and buying treasury notes? Um, the other thing you talked about in this uh, review... He was uh, persistent too, I believe. I have that on my notes. Particularly for the communities that you're talking about. You mentioned it just now when you were talking. Um, if that's something that you're identifying, and that's something that the Fed is learning more about this year, why not continue to push those gains, uh, particularly for people who are re-entering the labor force? Well, I, I think we're doing that. I mean, I think we're, we're, we're keeping... I think we've, we've made very substantial adjustments to policy over the course of this year. We ended the year expecting some further rate increases, there was inflation, now we're going through rate cuts. It's a very substantial shift. It was a mega shift. Last October, he said that they were thinking about increasing rates three times. That's why the market sold off. You could go back and look it up a quick, quickly pull, it up, pull up your phone, sorry, pull your phone. Look at the market what happened last week, last year. We, a year from now, the market was trembling down because he said that they thought about raising rates. So it sold off. A year now, they have cut the rates three times. That's why it's so, like he said, significantly and persistently that they're doing all this. It's crazy. The effects of it have been felt over time, so we, we feel like that those shifts are appropriate to support exactly the other habits we're talking about, which are a continuing strong labor market, things like job creation. Describe uh, the shifts that you've made so far. It wasn't just about trade uncertainty, it was about specifically these kinds of high pressure labor gains. Well, no, it was, so we've said it was about three things. It was, it's been about uh, slowing the global economy with a synchronized slowdown in economic activity around the world. It's been building for just about 18 months now. And that's having an effect on U.S. activity, like part of the, uh, the weakness in manufacturing, export, and business investment. We've had trade policy uncertainty, which we think also has been relying on activity and investment. And, so, and we've had inflation, which um, we've called out the risk of, of Inflation rate persistently below two percent as a risk that we needed to address. So we've been doing it to address all of those things. I would say the the, um, the gains in the labor market have been great to see. It's particularly the fact that uh, people at the lower end of wages have been getting most of the benefit, of most of the wage gains in the last couple of years. That's a great thing. We know from our Fed listens events that we've been hearing from people who live and work in more moderate income communities that this is the best labor market they've seen in their lifetime, things like that. And and by the way, there's also there's still so many people who work. Okay, so I, here's something I touch on that that I see personally. I see I see a bunch of moms and dads, 28, so not that young. I see people that have to go two jobs. The wife has a job, the husband has a job, of course. But more importantly, they have part-time jobs just to keep up with bills. So it's good to have jobs, but all these jobs are in this gig economy. They're all part-time jobs. Uber, Lyft, Grubhub, whatever it is, you know, there's all these little part-time jobs that people take just to make ends meet. And I know, and I've seen a lot of these people. People work at Smart Final. People work at you know, security guard, UPS. This is not UPS, the delivery, but Universal Protection Services. As a custodian, as a guard, like I said, you know, all these kinds of little jobs here and there. And yeah, it's good to have these jobs, but they're not great paying jobs. That's why when they say stuff like this, I'm like, dude, really? In manufacturing, the way it keeps declining, it keeps contracting which are the numbers that are gonna come out on Tuesday, and they keep showing that they're contracting, the next leg up of gold will come up. You know, still not in the labor market yet, and there's, there's just a lot more good to be done there. 
the same time, we have to think about the whole economy. And, um, but yes, those are those gains are very positive. We can call them out. They are a reason for us to want to extend the expansion of something more to this point. Um, the Fed's balance sheet, um, you all recently resumed purchases of Treasury bills, and uh, I, I was just wondering, um, how long do you expect? Okay, so I have this marked down. So she brings up the repo market because now they're increasing their balance sheet. Remember, they can't be increasing the balance sheet without us knowing that every Thursday the numbers comes out. Every week on Thursday, we know the numbers. And this time they showed us a significant gain that they bought. Like I said, like $546 billion around there. That's nuts in a week. They're up, like I said, they're up to four trillion. So she brings it up. He talks a little bit about it, and then he goes, he gets back into it at a uh, forty-two ten. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this one, then I'm gonna take you to forty-two ten. That way you understand the whole picture about the repo market, and how the banks aren't loaning money here. Here you go. That to continue, um, and, and given the fact that um, you know the repo operations, it seems like the Fed is having to increase the amount of liquidity, temporary liquidity, that is injecting into the system. Um, you know, do you still feel like it's just that there is not enough reserves in the system? Do you feel like you have a good sense of, of what's going on there? Okay, so on the how long, what we said is that we expect full purchase to continue at least into the second quarter of next year. When we said that temporary market operations we expect to uh, continue, I think, at least until the end of January, I believe. Yeah, the end through January. Um, in terms of the causes, um, so there, there's a lot of uh, forensic work going on by us and by market participants and all kinds of analysts. And, uh, you know, one thing is that um, we think we need reserves to be backed up to the level, the minimum level of reserves that we can have during Talking about during bank during holdings. the fluctuation that you see with reserves uh, is something like uh, 1.45. Really a little higher, and that's the level in early September. So we're going to be adding reserves to the bank for that place. That's that's one thing. Pretty more but money, pretty more dollars. So uh, dollar, uh, dollars maybe, sinking. One thing that was as you say, now this gold is going up. Liquidity didn't seem. It was still negative, but it was going up. As one might have expected, we had surveyed the banks carefully about what was their lowest comfortable level of reserves, and many banks that were well above that level did not. Take that excess cash and invest it in the repo market. Right? So, this is why they had to get into the repo market. This is one of the things that they had to do. Banks were not loaning out the money, that, the excess money that they had. Even though they had a, they were above the threshold that they were uh, comfortable holding, they weren't lending out their, so, you know, their surplus to the market. So, they stepped in and did it. Even though that these banks were low, were already above it, so the step Fed, the Federal Reserve stepped in. Much higher rates. They just they didn't they didn't do that. And so the question is why? And are there things that we can do that would adjustments that we could make that would allow liquidity to flow more evenly in the system without in any way sacrificing the safety and soundness of our financial system? So we're looking at those. Those are not things that can happen that could can really address the situation in the short term, but those are the range of things that we're looking at as well. Okay, so you talked about it there, and he's going to follow it up at 40, at, uh, what did I say, 40? No, 4210, sorry. So we're going to go out to 4210, we're going to jump forward because he brings it up again. That way you guys have an understanding about the repo market. Remember, the repo market is an overnight where they let, let banks borrow money overnight for one time hold overnight because they didn't have enough cash and their banks for people to withdraw money. Sounds nuts. Sounds nuts. I you know, but that's what it is. And the normal rate was 1. 1. 1.8 overnight annual rate, and it jumped to 10% before, until the Fed jumped in overnight. It's a 42 10 is what I have. So this follows up on the repo market. Hi, Nancy Marshall, Answer with Marketplace. Um, have there 
much in the repo market led you looking to whether the, the liquidity and, and capital requirements for banks are too high? Um, is that something that the Fed might review? So we're, I think, again, I think the most important basic thing is to get the level of reserves, of reserves back up so that reserves move up and down with some volatility. We don't want them to move below the level they were at in the beginning of September, which is, again, between 1.45 and 1.5 trillion. That's, that's the main thing, that's the first thing. We're on a path to do that between our temporary open market operation and also our, our uh, bill purchases. In addition to that, in addition to that, we're looking at if there are, it's a, it's a big complicated marketplace and there was the, so one of the surprises as I mentioned, was that banks that had told us that their lowest uh, comfortable level of reserves was here, they were well above that, and yet they didn't deploy that liquidity when there seemed to be great opportunities to do that. It didn't happen, so why is that? And so we're we're doing uh, careful analysis of that. Um, I, you asked would we lower capital liquidity requirements because of this, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think that's where this goes. I think where it may go though, is to look at, for example, intraday liquidity, um, which used to be a common thing. It used to be a common thing for banks to have intraday liquidity from the Fed with what are called daylight overdrafts. That's something we can look at. Also, there, there are just a few technical things that we can look at that will perhaps make the liquidity that we have, which we think is ample in the financial system, move more freely and, and be more liquid. Uh, and those are things we would do, but only if we could do it without compromising safety or soundness or financial. Okay, so that's what he talks about the repo market. He fills in the gap that he left from 2310. That they're going to do anything they need to do, basically, to get there. The next clip that I'm going to show you is what started real, uh, brought gold to the positive territory. Basically, they ask him about the stance and policy. Once again, is that a combinative or is it neutral? It's a direct question. He answers it. That's when gold finally reversed. On the way drive here from San Diego to where I live now, Anaheim. I'm like, boom, there it is. So we need to go to 3825. I was uh, Paul Kerner from Dow Jones Newswires. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, Wondering if, if you would categorize uh, the current stance of monetary policy as nominative um, or if it's just you know, the neutral is lower than we thought at this time last year. Um, secondly, you know, we're now two years removed from the tax cuts and job debt, jobs act. Um, the economy is growing at about the same pace it was before 2%. Um, Remember, I talked about GDP and the number came out before the Fed did anything. It came out, it came out positive 1.9. Above forecast, I think the forecast was 1.6. I could close the screen. I mean, I could minimize it, bring it up, show you guys, but <coughs> slightly old news, but you can see it yourself. And they're growing at the same rate that they were before, before the job cuts, before you know the tax breaks and all this stuff that Trump did. We're going at the same rate, and yet they put dump, dump a bunch of money into the market. That's why I love this question. You know, I think he hit it. He this man hit it out of the park. So. Given your mention of fiscal policy and the role played for long term growth, um, you know, is, is it fair to say that the tax cuts and jobs act for the way it was supposed to be? Sorry, say again with the first question of your word. Ah, yes. So, um, if you look at where the federal funds were raised, Rating should be a little lower, maybe a little lower after the range of 175. So that means the real rate is probably modestly below zero. Um, I think my own sense would be that that's somewhat accommodated possible. Uh, I would say though that. Uh, At that moment, boom, there you go. It was full, the reverse was full on. Uh, there's a range of plausible estimates of what the neutral rate of interest is, and I think uh, many. Those who make such estimates have moved their estimate down over the course of many years, and that process continues. But nonetheless, that seems to me to be very likely to be an accommodative stance of policy, an inappropriate stance given the situation we're in. Goes back to a statement. Risks. 
but appropriate. So the last episode brought up the IMF that they expect to go, you know, there's a global slowdown occurring. She goes on to touch about that. So we, we monitor um, financial stability risks very carefully all of the time. It's, uh, it's what we do since the financial crisis, as I've mentioned before. Currently, we don't see large imbalances. The long, this long expansion is, is no, notable for the lack of large financial imbalances like the ones we've seen certainly before the, before the crisis happened. Um, so we have a four-part framework I'll quickly mention. The first is leverage in the financial system, which is low by historical standards. Standards. <clears throat> the second is funding risk, which is the risk of runnable funding, and that, that risk is also quite low for uh, for banks, but also for um, you know, non-banking financial sector. Um, if you look at asset prices, we see some high asset prices, but not broadly across a range. Uh, uh, we don't see bubbles in that kind of thing. Um, I'd stop that there. They don't see bubbles. QE is good for the rich. If you have a property, you know, you print out more money, it goes up in value. The more money you print out, the more, you know, dollars worthless, but inflation kicks up, the property goes up in value. They don't see that. Also, quickly touching on the banks. Remember, banks, if they don't get funding or any company doesn't get funding, that's how you go out of business if you can't get funding. Saying that they don't see any of that. Historically, all these levels are down. Interest rates have been going lower. People have been, you know, companies have been doing buybacks, increasing their price share. But there is no issue with it. He sees no risk. And that leaves the, the, the fourth, which is leverage in the non-financial sector, and that's households and businesses. So with households, again, we don't see um, leverage. We see them actually getting in very good shape financially. In the aggregate, obviously, plenty of households are not in great shape financially, but in the aggregate, the household sector is in a very good place. That leaves businesses, which is where the issue has been. Leverage among uh, corporations and other forms of business, private businesses, is historically high. We've been monitoring it carefully and taking appropriate steps. Um, so that's what I would say. But it's corporate debt is, is one part. Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. <clears throat> Here's where I have an issue with this. It's being shown that people are defaulting on their car loans. It's being shown that Americans are defaulting on their loans. This is data that they have too. I'm not breaking news here. It's being shown, and you can look at this, and I touched on it, and somebody brought it up in my in a, a DM. One of the reasons for credit card rates to go up is because the people that are actually paying their credit cards on pay on time whether it's a minimum or paying it off which is what you should be doing those people are paying for the people that aren't paying so people are defaulting on their cards or whatever is it should just go up because you have, they got a bank's got to make up the money that they lost on the person that they let borrow money they can't pay back now so your rate rates go up because now you got to cover the guy that isn't paying their his fair share of the pie so you're the one that has to pick up the debt to make up for it so he's saying that they don't see the household american households that they're over leveraged credit cards loans and all these things are through the roof they're at an all-time high and he's saying that you know yeah he acknowledges that some of them some of them you know are bad and some of them are good but the people that i know again i live in california and i got brought up the yelp thing last episode we're gonna, you see, we see it first before the rest of the country sees it. Because we have a surplus of people here. We have, a, we have a boatload of people. And so we have to struggle with everybody else's things that they're bringing up. So he goes on to talk about that. And then there was an article that came out like, oh, what bubble in the corporate market? And so I come out on Market Watch. What are they talking about? They don't know what they're talking about. You know, the market rating went up on corporate debt. From like in Moody's and all the people that are rating agencies. And I'm like, great. 
great, you know, like the big short didn't show us the movie too, but in general, you know, like the agencies, even when they went to Congress, said that there were just suggestions on the rating on the, oh, the ratings were just suggestions. And it showed that, like the big short showed that they could be bought, they could have, if they, don't, they didn't, didn't, if they didn't rate their bonds appropriately for the surplus mortgage rating, you know, they were, they would go somewhere else. So he takes, you know, that's why I'm like, ah, oh, when I was hearing that part, I was like, get out of here. So I'm going to show you guys the chart for the dollar, the five day chart. So the dollar's coming down again, like I said. Emerging markets are going to make money. Global, which is this one, Global Dow. It's just overall market thing. There's other ones you can look at. But I just go with this one because it's on here, Market Watch. And they're up. They're going to go up. As, you know, Germany contracts and manufacturing, you know, as other countries, all these Japan, uh, Japan too, I believe. But South Korea, all these markets start contracting. Eventually, they're going to hit the bottom. China's gonna hit their eventually it'll hit his bottom. Eventually India will hit his bottom and they'll go up. As the dollar goes down, it becomes more acceptable for other, you know, other countries that could do more because of you know trade standards. They go around, they could buy more. I think the dollar's gonna close out at 95 by by November, end of November, going to December. Because that was the low that it was at last year. I'll show you the one year chart. What I'm talking about is around there. So 96, 96 95. Because at the rate that it's dropping, the dollar's at a tipping point. And I'll bring it up right now. And what I'm talking about. This is not my chart. Like I said, it's North Star. You guys should follow him on Twitter. This is a dollar. This doomed dollar long term bearish view remains unchanged. Unless 99 is broken to the upside. So this is his chart. This is his way of doing it. You know, he brings it up. He gives you great. <clears throat> little notes, footnotes, you want to call them that. But obviously, you know, they're there, higher. <laughs> he talks about the apex, would be 99 approximately. The dollar closes a month below the bearish raising wage. When it's closing in, it's a wedge, obviously, and it's coming down. At that rate, he's seen, I said 96, he's seen 96, you know, a little bit lower than 695. 95, four, nine, four, around there. It's pretty low. So then what I'm talking about is like this mark right here. Where the dollar is at. So around 95, going 95, which which is what I showed you the low. <clears throat> oh yeah, 95.5. There you go. He has it there. Sorry. And he's talking about the dollar. You know, the macros, you know, they're coming down. It's, it's going to come down. And that's stock, you know, STOC is the indicator that using for this. The next thing moving lower now. So it's going to come into this range. And that's what I believe too. It's going to come down. Not because of his chart, but because of the way the fundamentals. He's charting it. When you're using technical analysis, you're going off of the color, you know, off of the chart. You really don't care about fundamentals. That's the whole point about charting. So he goes on about that. And I believe that's a great chart. And I believe that's what's going to happen. It's going to break down. Maybe that this bounce is going to go back up, like he says, because it will. Nothing ever goes down because people always want to buy a dip because, you know, charting. So I brought up the calendar. This is the the economic calendar. And what I have on it is it should be Tuesday. Okay, so Tuesday. You know, the experts come out, imports. This is on the morning. This is my time. I'm in California. So at 9.45, we'll get the service PMIs. We'll get the ISM numbers on manufacturing. Come out, they'll come out. Not manufacturing PMI, which is this one. Which I said, it's trending downwards, you know, clearly. You can see it coming down, yeah, it bounced back up. The expectation is that it will bounce back. That's what the expectation is. I believe it's going to contract. Eventually, this number will go down below 50. Because a lot of jobs are switching off, and they talked about it there in the press conference, if you listen to it all. The manufacturing is switching, people from manufacturing... Manufacturing jobs are switching to service jobs, which was a trend that was occurring in Obama's day in office. Meaning that we were going from creating stuff, physically creating stuff, and you know, producing stuff, to service, to fixing stuff, selling insurance, 
selling services that other people need. So that's the trend that's going on. So that's why eventually everything will come back and bite us. So I believe it's going to keep going down. That's what I mean. If you have your options for number 15, this number comes out on the Tuesday as an it keeps contracting downwards, you're going to get the leg up of gold that's going to come up. So anybody in number 15, you're positioned at a great place. That time decay is on your time. Mm, I'm going to close this already. Close this one already. So the market, the one that I brought up was GDX. Like I said, I'm not patting myself on the back. There's nothing to pat yourself on the back yet. So 5 day chart, remember I said, you know, Monday, last Monday. So you can see that it started to go up. This is an ETF. If you get a 2 to 3% rally on this, it's a massive move for your options. So I believe it's going to keep going back up. So if it reaches 30, anyone that you, like I said, like at 32, 31, those options, you could sell them. You're you're already in the green. You should be in the green now, but you will be big. Uh, I almost use the president's word because it keeps saying it so much. I almost said bigly. <laughs> Not a word. You'll be, <clears throat> you'll be in a great spot to continue to make money, but you don't need to risk it holding on to it because, it, you know, if you could get out of it before this week that's coming up, You've made good profit. If you want to, you've bought two, you want to sell one to lock in profit, you're great. You're in, a, you're in a great spot. Then you just ride the other one out until Wednesday if you want. You ride it for free and you're still making money. Then you sell it as it keeps rallying. The other thing that I want to bring up is earnings because earnings, you know, they've been uh, been great. You know, you'll, you'll hear that all of them have been make, beating earnings. So yeah, well, the market, I mean, the thing is though, you know, he breathed, once again, I'll bring up. <clears throat> Henrich, beating lower expectations is still showing negative earnings growth. So companies still aren't making no, they're still not growing as much. SAPX is reporting year or declining earnings of negative 2.7 for quarter 3 2019, which would make the third straight quarter of year over year earnings declines for the index. And yet nobody cares why because they beat earnings. If you lower expectations down low enough, which companies do because of, you know, the global slowdown, of course you're going to beat them. If you don't beat them, you get hammered like Uber, like Uber Eats did. No, not Uber Eats. Grubhub did. 40% decline because they can't beat low earnings expectations. So they get hammered because they're not generating profit because it's so hard to compete with other people that are giving away free money, free services. And if you're buying something on Grubhub, and, you know, to your... Jack in the box, they had like four bucks on there, you know, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'd rather just go get it. Unless you're really lazy and you're like, oh, I'm going to go get it. I'd rather pay the, the thing. Close to give up with a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of codes. So if there's no need, just create a new email. They'll give you the code. So here's something else I want to touch on how I firmly believe algorithms are driving the market up. I believe that, you know, all this, buy the rumor, sell the fact type of thing. They, they can't do anymore because of the China trade deal. You, they could keep phase one. Now there's phases two and three. Don't think two and three are going to happen. Phase one seems like it can happen, but it doesn't seem like it's going to do very well. Kolo and Trump were talking about it on Friday. So here's a quick chart. It shows that ACP has become totally detached from the underlying profit, just as it did in the 1990s, late 1990s. So this is what we're seeing. Driving up, driving up, driving up, the bubble, 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 bubble goes up. And all the companies were worth so much, all the internet companies, and boom! Actually, they weren't worth much. Same thing is occurring here. No one cares about earnings, even though they're coming out year over year. Most trading is algorithms, and they go into it in real vision, they talk about it, about the pension funds. Like I said, you want to listen to other people that have been doing this for longer than I have. I simply just believe in, you don't need to be the smartest person in the room, you just have to be the best listener. To put yourself in a great spot to make money. So this is nuts to me because everything's just out of this. The last thing I'll bring up is his chart on the gold miners. North Star, you know, like I said, I believe that everything's positioned properly enough to where the gold miners are going to make money for everybody. Now, I just don't want you to get too greedy. If you have number 15, 
expect this to sell off. I'm even gonna sell off some of my you no know, January calls once it gets up to that point. Which I'm talking about like thirty dollars, thirty one dollars for the you know, gold uh, GDX. If you wanna hold on to them, hold on to them. You can, but you're playing with fire at that level because you know volatility. Like I said we lost money in October, August, September. Most people, because if you spend out of the money, you're done. <clears throat> so here we go. So he brings up the gold miner. He talks about the charts that he has. He talks about the breakouts where he sees it again. You know, he uses a STLCH um, metric at the bottom. This one. And it's starting to go up. Okay, he brings up the other one, the junior gold miner. Same exact thing. It's broken out. It's rallying up. American's gold bugs. And once again, it's breaking out. Amex gold bugs. Okay, this is, you know, the cup and handle. Coming down, you know, bounce back up, coming up, coming up, and it's expected to go up. So these these are people's charts, you know, and like I said, I use everybody's charts because I gather as much information as I can because I want to give you guys the best information as well. And that's why I try and look to other people's and read other people's and read as much as I can when I hear, see stories and I still have my day job, of course. So I'm busy with everything else, and I, but I want to put you guys in a position to make you guys money understand that. If it rallies up high, if it goes up to 32, it makes new highs, GDX, KGC, New mall mining, all these companies that I've you know I've shown you, I'm Robin Hood. I want to put you guys in a position to make money. At the same time, if they go up, why not just use a little bit of the money, about 20%, to buy puts for around you know. You have to be careful because uh Thanksgiving, those days the market's closed. So around November, right around the end of November, that gold, you know, that'll come back down a correction. It gives correction, and then as soon as it goes down, whatever you sell them, and you make a little bit of extra more cash, and then you buy long term. So one of the things I want to point out real quickly before, because I'm trying to keep this under an hour, I got like two minutes left. The news you're gonna get if you buy the if you bought the options for November 15, or you're gonna buy the options for November 15th. Monday usually seems to be like the day that gold sells off in the morning. So I'm looking to buy a little bit more. Of these GDX, I'm staying on it. Gold is going up again, just so you guys can see it here. Future market, it is seven plus 70. You want to see silver also, by the way, rally two to one. So, right now, this is not a healthy rally, but I expect it to correct itself in the morning. If you do all that, you're going to get the VIX is at 12. The last time it was at the level was last year, so well, I'll tell you, it's basically gone. It could only go back up. I think it bottomed out already. It's going to go back up. There's going to be more and more articles are coming out. There's going to be a 10% correction in the ACP 500. So you'll get that correction. You'll get the volatility going up from the VIX. You'll get the earnings from the, all the gold miners. You'll be able to make big moves. That's why I keep saying number 15 because you're going to capture all the moves, all the earnings from all the miners. And you no, know, most of them have been doing good. Like if they beat earnings, they're going up. Dollar going down, they're going up. Market it goes down, they go up. Like you know, we went over 23 trillion in the U.S. Only could go up because they're only printing out money. We're going, to, we're spending one trillion, you know, year to date. Budget deficit, it could only go up. So you're gonna get all these things, all these plays if you use, if you buy a number 15 call. <clears throat> and I'm gonna end the stream just by, uh, not the stream, but this part of my stream because I'm going to start playing games with my friend. I have to keep saying this. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You just have to be the best listener. And I hope you guys all make money. I appreciate you guys hanging out. It means a lot and I hope you guys make, you know, all your crazy dreams come true and if you need help and you want me to, you know, explain to you a little bit more in detail, just reach out to me on uh, Instagram. Un lost underscore still lost and I'll answer your DM I appreciate you guys hanging out no time to play some games
gotta be kidding me. Let's go! Ta -da, ta -da. I'm ready to play! Alright guys, I need to run an ad because I need to go do something real quick. Sorry! Damn, my mic is weird. 
Sorry about that. Message my brother, as you saw. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to see if he wants to play Rocket League on doubles. Oh, I thought it was like a corner. Let's try it. Mmm, try to chip him. That close? Tough. Oh no, oh no. Good job, but oh damn, that body. I'm glad I gave them my spot too, by choice. Pasala. Oh, good job. Oh. Oh. Pena. I thought it would give it to me too. That's cool. I like that, that you can see where it's gonna shoot it. Oh man, sorry guys. The camera. We might have to move that. Oh, I wasn't aware that I got the thing. Come on, I called for it, bro. Ah. Ah, oh, yeah, we kidding me. It took too long. Oh no. My man said invite. I wonder why I have that. Invite to party that way he knows. Please, 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 please. Please. Why can't you give it to me, bro? I'm ready to party the way he knows. Bro, I ran. I ran for you. Oh, come. Let him go, there he's white. Please. <gasps> I thought it was like one touch it. Oh, that was me. That was me. Yeah, I deserve to get I deserve to get punished. Punish me. Punish me, Daddy. That was a little weird. I thought it was gonna hit it perfectly diagonal. No. I ran though. Oh, I thought it was going to get it. I'm staying still. No, I thought it was going to pull it into me. He could have pulled back. There we go. Oh, I saw it. No, come back. Oh, come on, bro. Ah, ha, ha, ha. That pressure got to him. <gasps> I wonder why I get so many like cuts, even though I'm not losing frames. I get that issue a lot. With the Xbox. What up, bro? Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? Or am I in game chat? Let's hear your voice. Let's hear your mic. So you could hear me. All right. Yeah, because it wasn't yesterday. I struggled to get the mic to work. I almost returned them. Hey, nobody's on, huh? Yeah. I streamed, the, I was streaming the, I did my financial show thingy. Good. Yeah. Because uh, I did a show last week calling the GDX. Because the Fed cut and all this stuff that I believe, you know, that I know. That it worked out. Oh, it sold off on Monday. But if you would have bought it on Monday, you may you're in the money already with the options for November fifteenth. Come on, let me get in front. Let me get the ball. I'm doing this uh, FIFA try to finish this game. We're almost at half. No! You should have kept running. I gotta go cover. Here we go. A little bit. Wait, 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 wait. What do you have, fan? Oh, that thing is la that thing is blowing, blowing. Yeah, it's good. Oh, what a pass! Can you hear my AC? No, my AC. Molly, good job, Brady! Yay! No, but he gave me a ball. It lo he looks like Freddy. He passed it to me, and I volleyed it. Your character. Dude, every time I get a message or whatever. The Xbox like freezes. I wonder what if it's because it's running at 60 hertz. Oh no, he wasn't expecting it. My bad. Well, 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 look who decided to join the league. I mean, the party. Trying to. Trying to be good. Yeah, I still get, I still have the little, the message thingy. We're about to hit Rocket League. Oh no! Yeah. Steven's waiting for me, that's why. Hey, dude, your friend is amazing, though. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah.
Five gigs nowadays. Tell me about it. I, I had AT and T. I had eighteen. Woo! I'll say. As an hour, expected to lose in the league. Oh, he this one did not want to pass it. It was a tap in goal. Good shot, bro. This was Tyler Lockett I and mean, Russell Wilson. Tore me up. It's a hundred expected to be a hundred and five, a hundred and six. Oh. How how's how's it Sanu doing? I dropped him last week. What the guy wouldn't do, this fight did for him. He put him a tap in and he missed it. What the other guy wouldn't do. Well this Scanley gave this guy zero. And he's still expected to beat me by point one. I mean by one. Shoot it, buddy. Go! Good job. Oh, I got Mari Cooper, though. He has Jane Connor and they let them out. Why is he still projected to beat me then? I still have Dallas. I know. He let them in there. He cut me some slack. I don't know why I'm projected to lose. 47%. In my other league, I benched uh, Mark Ingram in Dynasty. How did he do in Dynasty? I know you're. I know you're trying to lose it. Doesn't matter. You need to. You still need to. Pull. How dare you tank on me? I want to get the first overall pick too, bro. How dare you just purposely tank and put players that aren't playing? That offends me. You did that last week. Uh huh. Uh huh. I was like, damn, bro, it's just me and you getting tr going for last. Well, what are we doing? Oh, this one got greedy. I'm trying to look at my other teams. Dude, this will give me a good pass. Good job, bro. Sorry. Hit it. Hit it. Ah, no, I missed it. Damn. This will miss the sweaty. A shock of a miss.
Oh. I know, that's what I'm looking at right now. I'm trying to look at the fantasy scores. I think he is off. Huh. Woo! I missed, guys. I'm sorry, guys. It already ended? Who won? Who won it? Baltimore won, thank God. It did, 37 20, I see it now. Mark Angel got me three points. The Dynasty League, I think I need, I need, I need Mark, I mean, I need uh, Ezekiel to get under 30 points. Yeah, and it's not going to be easy because, you know, it's New York. So your boy in trouble. And that's the dynasty league I'm trying to win. I'm I'm in win now mode. Oh it gave me the sash! I love you. Yeah. It's all good, bro. It happens to. I was trying to trade for him, and Peter wouldn't trade him for him. But we're now that Brandon Cook is injured, and if he retires, I don't think he will retire. But what, somebody shot my trade down. He put it in the message board. It's like this was like, oh, Brandon Cook is retiring. I'm like, no, he's not. I'm like this guy. So he canceled the trade. And I was trading for Marvin Ingram. I was getting Mark Breida and Brandon Cooks for Marvin Mar, Mark Ingram, the third from Chargers, and he beat me because of Mark Ingram. I was mad about it. I was like, damn, this fool's messed up my tray. Then I tried out from DJ Moore and uh, Brita. And he said no again. And DJ Moore went off. Wait, we got another player? Who joined? Who joined the party? Mm. It was Dre. We won. I got a goal and I got an assist and I got a match rating of 8.6. Let's go. I forgot a 10. I got a rocket league. No, no, Now go, bro, invite me when you're done. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna message them on Snapchat. See you, Joy. Mm, that girl sent me a post from Huda Beauty. Damn, that eyeshadow palette is actually, it's actually gorgeous. I like me love this one. What a beauty taking all my money. Did he really get off or did he just see the party? this real quickly. Da -da -da. Close all these up. Cause the CPU, I don't know if it's still that stuff is still yanking uh power from it. Da -da 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 Oh wait, I was looking for the shiny paint. Tell me it was at the end. Gloss. Is this it? It is it. Do it like that. Can I do this one too? Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I like that one. Sorry, guys. Sun damage. No, not that color. No, I'm oh. <gasps> mm, car fiber. Yeah, I'm gonna be that guy. Reminds me of the three fifty Z. I'm gonna wait for my brother. I'm gonna play with these. I don't know where he's at. But we will achieve. We will succeed. I got a shiny paint job. I want to show it off. Haha. <laughs> Ah, oh, come on, I got blown up too. Out of here. I hit it. Oh, my brother can't connect to the party.
Invite me to the, invite me to the game. Warm it up. Hey, can you hear me? I know. It's, it's noticed right now. Yeah, I got an assist. Well, invite me. I'm gonna join you. All right. We did it guys, we did it. Why does it look choppy? No saying it looks choppy. It's not good. This quality's gotta improve. Oh, oh there we go, good job to me. Oh. <laughs> you guys did? No, you beat me to it. Yeah, you haven't played drop shot with you in a while. The only time I play drop shot is with you guys, with Jose. Ah, oh, here we come. Ah, oh, missed it. Oh, I thought I was going to hit it over this guy. Damn it. No, not again. No, again on me. Damn it. Mm. Like, because I waited for it, because I didn't have boost. Exactly what I want to do. I want to blow him up. Ah, let's type it. What a goal. Oh, that doesn't get it. Ha 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 ha. Uh oh. Oh, good job, man. Hit it. There you go, buddy. I got it. There it is. There it is. No! Bro! This man missed it. He missed it too. God is good. Ah! No, you're not going to get that goal. Get out of here. <laughs> no, I missed it. It was a good game. Mainly because we all suck. Oh, 
there it is guys please over hit it Put it back on the wall ah oh, there we go that was dangerous but I guess his body both my guys are going no <laughs> Hit it, hit it, buddy. Hit it, hit it. Oh, that would have been miraculous. Take the shot. Okay, buddy, like we were trying to take the shot or what? What do you think we were trying to? Ah, oh, let me tell you, I didn't have enough boost. Oh, I was trying. Dude, no, I got a jam. Oh, he got me to it. He beat me to it. There it is. Oh, no, I want to be the hero. Let me be the hero. No! Again! There it is. Please give me an assist. Oh, he blocked it! Woo! There it is, bro. I push it to it. No! Go forward! <laughs> Here, it's gonna be a risky turn. No, I turned because I went the other way. I didn't want to turn the ah, oh, I got you kidding me. Ah, oh, it's horrible. That is horrible. I lost, bro. We lost in overtime. What did Renee say? I can the game. I am waiting for you. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it later. Off stream. People want action. I got put on that paint job that uh, Jose was telling me. No, 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 no. Like the shiny paint. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, oh my God! Wow. 
That's an ugly ass car, bro. And you made it up there. Congratulations. You suck. <laughs> oh, brother. With the hat? It has to be ugly or it has to have that paint job? Uh, this doesn't work out. We could do th three, three, uh, three. Going for it. No, I missed it. I did it. No! I went, I broke the wrong way. Uh, I kept it here, don't worry. Ah, oh, this guy got me to it. Go. That's a go. I just wanted him. I didn't want him to touch it. He's got it over me. Ah, uh, because I went in reverse, sorry. Get out of here, buddy. This is as good as in a get, bro. Good job. Go. Cool. Oh, there we go. All you. Oh, there are all you. I'm, I just blocked them. I blocked the other one. No! <laughs> I got it here. Oh! I'm fighting these guys over here. Tooth the nail. Yeah. You missed it. I hit. Over them. I uh, over them again. Go. Good go. No! <laughs> bro, I missed it. He missed it. No, bro. Bro, I thought I was gonna get it. Oh my bad. Look, watch. I came in. Oh, you didn't see it. I spilled beer on myself. You know what? So you can't be drinking and driving. Well, I reduced them. I'm gonna be a little upset. Got it out of here. Oh, I thought you were going to get it. I know. That's you, Steven. Good shit. Oh, I hit it in the middle. It stayed there. He missed it too, though. He thought I was going to get it too. Oh, I thought I was going to get it too. What the... 
What is going on? I did. It's rolling in. No! We went the wrong way. He missed it, no. Good goal, bro. Good goal. Good job. <laughs> Let's give my man a round of applause. <clears throat> he did great. Good goal. Good goal, bro. Look at that. Turn the tables on these guys. That's a compliment on He replies, so you know. That's it, bro. Sleeping on the wheel over there. Sleeping on the wheel. Damn, they're gonna sleep on the wheel now. Woo! That's what we do, baby, right there, guys. Easy go. Boop, 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 boop. I'm gonna hit him with that one. I'm gonna hit him with that one, you know why, guys? Because that's what they deserve. Watch us turn it on us. Ah, what a save! That's what we're talking about! And I refuse to let it hit the ground. Uh, I told you that guy, make, that man got involved. Let the record stand. My brother didn't do anything in that game. All he did was tap in. He ain't getting no saves. He ain't care about the team. He's just here on my back. Holding me down, chat. I got a decrypto. Okay, so. Look at him. Oh, we're going again? Hey, are, are we doing right? Damn, look at that guy. We're moving up the ranks. Good goal. I wasn't going to get it because I thought it was going to bounce on the wall too. So I was like, oh, I'll bounce. I thought he was gonna tap it out. He was waiting for it. That's cool. Oh, he got it. You did, but I'm here. Oh, I just fucking bumped me. You're all alone. I bumped it. I bumped it in the middle. Right in the middle. Good job. That was planned. All that boost that I had. There you go. Had to be used.
Uh, do you beat me to it because I don't have boost? I didn't have boost at all. I didn't know he was coming for it. But I'm like, oh, I think I have enough time to get it. Did not work out. Oh, I mistimed it. You got it. You're alone. You're literally alone. You still got bumped by me. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I just want to keep it in here. Good goal. Good goal. I didn't want them to get it out because then we struggle. I went out. No. You missed it. No, I missed it too now. Damn it. I missed it. I thought I, I thought I had enough boost to get up in the air and get it. But once I realized that it was too short. But another news, shout out to the Ravens. I'm giving England, New England their first D. Defeat. Us as an Americans, we needed that. There it is. Blow him up. No, I went the wrong way. Uh, why can't I get good breaks? He centered it. I turned, I turned, I turned too late. I know, but I turned the look. If you look at it, I turned right instead of left. Watch. See? Oh no, I actually turned the right way. I guess the drift didn't work out. Oh, good job, Steve. That would have gone in. Oh, I thought he was wanting to nibble on it. Ah, oh, shot on goal. I just missed it. We kept it here. We kept it there. Good goal. Good goal. Good goal. Look at my bro. <clears throat> I didn't know that. How do you do that? I don't have enough boost. Oh, this woman, this man got in the way. I got an assist. I got an assist from off of that. See? He pushed it in. I wasn't going to defend. I was thinking about defending once I missed. 